you never know who has the same interests as you. Recently at work, I was making a presentation and casually asked if anyone else was a watch aficionado. Watch what happened. Welcome everybody, good morning. Welcome to our third quarter portfolio presentation. Before I get started, I'd like to ask if there are any watch enthusiasts out there. Well, that's quite surprising. Turns out my own boss, our general manager, is a watch collector. One day I noticed an odd looking watch on his wrist. Turns out it was a Weiler Geneva Code R chronograph. Stay tuned to discover the story of the Weiler Watch Company and an overview of this tough watch. Welcome to Adventures with Time. I'm your host, Bob. On this channel, I talk about my experiences with watches. If that interests you, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you're alerted whenever I upload a new video. And if you like pictures of watches, follow me on Instagram. When I started collecting watches, I thought it was a fairly niche hobby. Yet I continue to discover that a lot of people are into watches. You may not know it right off, but sometime, somewhere, something will happen that uncovers their interest in watches. Maybe you ask them about a watch they're wearing, or vice versa. And then you find out someone you've known, perhaps for a long time, is also a watch collector or watch enthusiast. Such is the case with me and my direct manager at work. I was admiring a watch he was wearing, and we discovered that we are both watch hobbyists. I uncovered other watch collectors at work, some active and some recovering collectors. Then one day, my boss was wearing a strange looking watch. I asked him about it, and he told me it was a Weiler Code R. He briefly explained that he purchased the watch around 2009. He really wasn't sure of the date when the company was liquidating their stock for pennies on the dollar. He actually bought two, one for himself and one for his father. I had never heard of Weiler, so I decided to investigate. And here's what I discovered. Paul Weiler was born in 1896 and founded his namesake watch company in 1924 in Basel, Switzerland. Weiler had a relationship with the Italian Binder Group almost from its inception. Weiler's initial rise in the watch world came in 1927 when they invented the Incaflex balance wheel, which incorporates elastic arms in the wheel to protect and absorb shocks that may damage or impact accuracy. The Incaflex was patented in 1927. Weiler also gained prominence through several key marketing activities. In 1934, Weiler became the official watch of Italy's World Cup team. In 1960, several of their models became the official watches of the Santa Fe Railroad. To demonstrate the resilience of their watches, in 1956, they dropped two of them from the Eiffel Tower. These hit the ground and continued to run. This was repeated in 1962 when they were dropped from the Seattle Tower. In 1933, in cooperation with and guidance from Binda, the company was rebranded as Weiler Vetta to illustrate both the Swiss and Italian roots. But it was in 1993 when the Binda Group assumed total ownership of Weiler, as Weiler was struggling to maintain its position, perhaps due to the quartz crisis. And in an attempt to relaunch the brand, restructured the line as Weiler Geneva at Baselworld 2006. However, this new life did not last long. And in 2009, Weiler Geneva filed for bankruptcy. The piece I want to review with you today is the Weiler Geneva Codar Chronograph, reference number 
1.4. For this model, they issued 3,999 pieces. I'm not sure if that total quantity is across all the varieties or just this reference, as I have seen several dial varieties on the internet, as well as some in different metal compositions. Also, I don't know if there is any significance to the amount 3,999. This watch sports a fairly large case, about 43 by 52 millimeters, constructed like a sandwich. Stainless steel top and bottom plates with a carbon fiber housing in the middle, all secured into a unit by four metal screws. It has a design inspired by auto racing, but let's start out with the dial. Although not truly skeletonized, the dial does have a multi-layered look. But the first thing one sees are those substantial screw heads. These are not meant to be hidden. Rather, they give an air of ruggedness to the watch. The hour and minute hands are tapered, but do not end in a point or an arrow. They are half painted with loom and half cut out. The chronograph second hand is a totally white needle type pointer. The dial itself has a grooved black base, somewhat looking like a vinyl record to me. Above this is a brushed stainless steel stencil plate with a minute track printed along the outer border with pips at each hour indice, except for the 12 o'clock position which sports two pips. The only hour numeral is at the 12 o'clock position and is actually formed by cutouts of the plate itself. The other cutouts define the three subdials. First, the running seconds at the three o'clock position with its orange hand. The chronograph minute indicator at the nine o'clock position and the chronograph hour indicator at the six o'clock position. The date window is at 4.30 with black numerals on a white background with a cutout large enough to see part of the previous and next date, but there are little pointers so you can clearly identify today's date. Moving around, we see the watch has a display case back, which is held in place by four little screws. Inscribed on the back is the following. Weiler Geneva, stainless steel titanium carbon fiber, the reference number of 100.4, the ink of flex name, the limited edition reference. This one is 3,332, and what I assume is a serial number. Note the black painted rotor, stylized to look like a ventilated disc brake. This model employs an ETA 2894-2 movement, which beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour and has a 42-hour power reserve. The crown on this model is covered in rubber, and is protected by a substantial crown guard. The crown guard is mounted on two pins such that it can be unlocked for better access to the crown. Above and below the crown are the two chronograph pushers, which resembles two car pedals. Completing the auto racing theme is a rubber strap with a tire pattern on its top. The durability of this watch comes from three main features the Incaflex balance wheel, the crown guard, and an interesting spring-mounted movement. You can see here that the four screws that hold the sandwich together incorporates springs, which enable the entire movement to float and absorb any shocks, something I have not seen on any other watch. Despite its large size, I found this watch to sit nicely on my wrist. It didn't feel bulky at all. Definitely a distinctive watch to have in one's collection. I'd be interested to know if any of you knew about the Weiler watches, and if you have any Weiler watches in your collection. Please let us all know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this view into the Weiler Watch Company, their history, and a close-up look at one of their last models. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.